In this class, we're going to take a look at the cast method. The cast method is just another way of visualizing the information you get from a sine, cos, or tan graph. And it basically just gives you a quick visual reference um, and another way rather than having to draw the graph to get certain information. So I'm kind of assuming in this class you're already familiar with the sine and the cosine and the tan graph. Um, if not, you could follow along and then check those out later. But ideally, you should kind of know both the cast method and those graphs. Um, but probably know those graphs before learning how to do the cast method. So just a reminder of a sine graph, which goes like this. So that's a typical sine wave. So that would be the function y equals sine x. And the thing about the sine graph is that all the key points occur every 90 degrees. So this point here is 90 along the way and that corresponds to that highest value. This point here in the middle is at 180 degrees. This point where we've got the minimum value occurs at 270 degrees. And then this final point at the end, at the end of the first cycle of the, the wave, is 360 degrees. So what we can do is kind of subdivide the, the graph based on those 90 degree in increments. And we call each of these chunks a quadrant. So this is quadrant one, this is quadrant two, quadrant three, and quadrant four. So notice that in quadrants one and two, the sine graph is above the x-axis. So we say that in one and two, the value of that function is positive. So basically we, we assign a value of zero to everything along the x-axis and everything above it we say is positive, everything below it is negative. So we're just really talking about the y values there. So these are all positive y values, here it's zero and these are all negative y values. So any point along the curve in quadrants one or quadrants two has a positive value. So that just means that if you took a point on the curve, say there, and then checked out the y value of that point, it's going to be somewhere here, that's going to be some positive value. Whereas if you had a point down here, if you take that over to the y-axis, it's going to have a negative value. So we say that in quadrants 1 and 2, sine is positive, but in quadrants 3 and 4, underneath the x-axis, it's negative. So that's fine, that's how we would do this on a graph, but we can re-visualize this on a cast diagram. And in the cast diagram, we, we basically set up a, um, let me draw it, where am I going to draw it? I'll draw it here. So we basically set up a kind of cross and instead of visualizing 0, 90, 180, 270, 360 going along the way, we do it going round the way. So it's kind of like almost like an anti-clockwise circle. So um, we don't actually even need an arrow, I suppose. So we start here at 0 and we go back in 90 degree chunks. So this is 90 degrees. This is 180 degrees, and then carrying on like that, 270, and then back for one full cycle to 360 degrees. And basically we're assigning quadrants one, two, three, and four to each of these parts here. So this would be quadrant one, this is quadrant two, this is quadrant three, and this is quadrant four. But we put labels on the cast diagram, and this is a confusing part at first. So if you don't get this straight away, it's fine. Everyone finds this difficult at first. So we label it C-A-S-T, that's where we get cast from. So C stands for cosine, A stands for all, I'll explain that in a moment. S stands for sine and T stands for tan. So the all basically means all three functions. So sine here, tan here, cos here, and sine, cos, and tan here. But what does it tell us about it? Well, what it tells us about each of the functions is that they're positive, they've got a positive value in their own quadrant. So here in quadrant two, sine is positive according to the cast diagram. Well, we know that from quadrant two, from the sine graph, it is positive. Quadrant one says all three functions are positive in quadrant one. And here in quadrant one, the sine graph was positive. When you go into a quadrant which is not part of the function you're interested in, then it becomes negative. So if we're dealing with a sine function, but we're looking in the third or the fourth quadrant where tan and cos are positive, then that must mean that sine is negative. And we can see on the sine graph, 
the sine is negative in 3 and 4. So it's just basically a quick method of allowing you to check where a function is positive or negative without having to draw out the graph. It's not really much quicker than the graph, to be honest. You should ideally be able to do both. Later on, when you do further trigonometry, there are things you'll do with the cast diagram over and above what you do with the graph. So you do need to know it just as a thing in itself, but to be able to kind of correlate it with the, the graph as well. Let's take a look at another function. I'll just do one more. I'll do the, the cosine. The tan function tends to be a bit more difficult to work with. You might have seen that already. The graph's all kind of disjointed, but the same principle applies for the, the tan function as well. So I'm just going to draw a cast, uh, sorry, a, um, a cos graph and then check that on the cast diagram. So the, the cos graph goes down like this. Remember, it's just a sine graph moved over a little. So for this one, this is quadrant one, quadrants two and three are in here. And then this is quadrant four. And we've got the same usual key point. So that's 90 degrees. That's 180 degrees there in the middle. This point is at 270. And then this end point here is at 360 degrees. So we can see that the cosine graph should be positive in quadrants one and four. So one and four, which it is, so that's good. Negative in quadrants two and three. So remember this is negative, zero, positive, and this is y equals cos x. So negative below the x-axis in two and three. Well, two and three are sine and tan, where cosine is negative, so that again fits in. So it's just, again, a way of re-visualizing this information over here. When you kind of draw the, the, the cast diagram, we tend to draw it fairly quickly. So once you get comfortable with the cast diagram, you'll probably end up just going like this. So C-A-S-T, you might even start to drop the labels. Um, you certainly won't need one, two, three, and four. You might just draw like that, or you might start to put on some labels. You might go 0, 90, 180, if that's the part you're interested in, or if you were looking down here, you might put on the 270. It's up to you, you'll figure out your own method for working with it, but don't over complicate it. It doesn't have to be drawn like some perfect thing. It's just something to help you answer a question. It's not really there as a question um, like as a solution in itself. The main reason why you'll need to know the cast diagram is for when you move to work in trig equations. When you work trig equations, it's good to get a quick visual reference on the cast diagram, and you'll see what I mean when you get to that topic. You might not be there yet. So to give an example of how we might use this, let's consider, let's consider the sign or the cause of some value. So let's say that we took a point here which was like at this point on the graph. So let's say that that point there is at 60 degrees. So I've gone 60 along to the right. If I go up here till I hit the graph and then along, you can see that that's clearly a positive value. So I, I'm, I'm working here with this, the, the cosine of 60 degrees. And I just want to know, I don't want to necessarily know the value. I just want to know whether it's positive or negative. So I can clearly see that off of the cosine graph. If I turn to the cast diagram, I would say, well, 60 degrees is between 0 and 1, so that's in uh, 0 and 90, so that's in quadrant 1, which is the all quadrant, where all three are positive, so that says that cosine has to be a positive value in that area. If we wanted to do another one, let's say the sine of, say, 210 degrees, so let's look at our sine graph. So 210, just a little beyond 180, so that's actually quite close to that point I marked on earlier, so... Let's say that we go down to that point and then along. So that's clearly going to be some negative value. Going to the cast diagram, 210 is in the third quadrant, the tan quadrant, where sine is negative, so that should be negative. You should never get information from the graph and the cast diagram which conflict. They should validate each other. So that's basically what the cast diagram is. It is confusing at first. Most students find this like pff, crazy. But you will, over time, learn the value of it. And especially, like I said, when you come to do trig equations, you'll find this an invaluable tool. In fact, you really cannot get away with not knowing the cast diagram at that point. So try to make sure that makes sense. It does require a bit of understanding, a bit of going back and forth between the graphs and the cast diagram. Or you might just get it. You might be one of those rare students who thinks, oh yeah, that's, that's cool, I get that. I see what's going on there. Um, but if you're going to do a, bit, a bunch of trigonometry, if you're taking a trig class, then you will undoubtedly require the cast diagram at some point. So 
um, best to get down with it now, make friends with it, and then it will be there ready to be used again in the, in the future. Don't overthink it, it's really just a way of revisualizing these in a more compact format, um, but it is worth getting a good understanding of.